Well, hey, everyone out there. Thanks for choosing our short explanation of the game Shipwrights of the North Sea. It's Chris here from JMNC Games, and today we are channeling our inner Viking as we try to build ships by collecting resources, hiring craftsmen, workers, and, of course, collecting gold. The game comes to you from Garp Hill Games. It's for two to five players, ages 10 and up, and the average game time is just about 50 to 70 minutes. If you haven't already done so, please take a moment to like and subscribe to our channel. We greatly appreciate that, and it sure does help us grow. Now, let's dive in and take a look at what's in the box. There is the Pioneer token, five VP markers, five gold ships, five player boards, 50 workers, 25 oak, 25 wool, 25 iron, 128 playing cards, and five player reference boards. To set up, each player should collect a player board, golden ship, three workers, and two resources of their choice. Place the golden ship on the number five. This scale is your gold tracker. Place your three workers here in the bottom right of the board. A player may have no more than eight workers here overnight. On the right side of the board is the mill. Place your two resources here. The mill may only hold eight goods overnight. However, the capacity of the mill can change based on what ships you build during the game. Workshop A and B are where you place ship cards that you decide that you want to try and build. Be careful, because once you place a ship in the workshop, it is very difficult to remove it. So make sure that it is a boat that you want to try and build. Choose a player to be first and give that person the pioneer marker. Play will go clockwise around the table. Place the rest of the resources and workers in the center of the playing area so that all players can reach. Shuffle the playing cards and place the deck in the center of the playing area. Now we're ready to go. This game is played in rounds. Each round has three phases. The morning phase, the planning stage, the afternoon phase, the working stage, and the evening phase the resting stage. First, we'll go over what happens in each of these phases, then afterwards, we'll go over the different cards and their actions. In the morning phase, each player will acquire three cards. To do this, the player who has the pioneer token will draw cards equal to the number of people playing plus one. They will look at those cards, choose one to keep for their hand, and pass the rest to the player on the left. That player will now look at the remaining cards and do the same. This continues until the last player, who will have two cards to choose from. They keep one and discard the other face down in the playing area. Now repeat the process again another two times, until all players have three cards in their hand. Once this is done, it ends the morning phase. The afternoon phase now begins starting with the first player. This player will now choose to play their cards, discard some or all of their cards, or take actions. There is no limit on how many actions can be taken, and you can repeat actions in a turn. However, once a player has played or discarded all of their cards, their turn is over, and the next player now takes their turn, and so on. Let's break down each of the actions a player can take during their turn. First, if a player has a card that they no longer can use or play, they simply add it to the discard pile. Buying goods. If a player wishes to buy any goods, they need to take a look at the top card of the draw pile. This will indicate how much of a particular good you will receive when making a purchase. 
It always costs the same, two gold and two of your workers. Move your gold marker down two on the scale and return two workers to the pile in the center of the play area. Now you collect this much of the particular good that you need. Collect the amount listed and place those goods in your mill. Now your mill can hold up to eight goods overnight. So it is okay to exceed eight during your turn, but if you still have more than eight come the night phase, you have to remove goods from the mill until you are back down to eight. Next, we'll look at buying a tool. If you have one of these yellow cards in your hand, you can see the price for buying the card here and the effect that the card will take once purchased. If you make the purchase, move the gold tracker the appropriate amount and lay the card face up on the left side of your player board. Most of the tools will allow you to build a ship without using one of a particular good. Once you use the tool, you would then place it into the discard pile. The other tool card is the trade cart. When purchasing this tool, place it where the tools go, then place one of each resource on it. The next time you purchase a good, you may also take the matching resource from your trade cart and place it into your mill. Once all three goods have been removed, discard the trade cart. Now on to hiring a craftsman. The red cards are different kinds of craftsmen that you will need to collect in order to build certain ships. Here at the bottom of the card will show you what ships each craftsman are good for. To play a craftsman from your hand, simply place it face up at the bottom of your player board. You may have up to four craftsmen in this position. The only way to remove a craftsman from this area is to build a ship or by playing a townsfolk card which would call for their removal. When you are completing a ship, in addition to turning in the goods that you need, you will also need to turn in the craftsman cards needed to complete the ship. The cards with the gray background are the townsfolk. There are many different kinds and here at the bottom you will see the instructions and effects of each of the town folk. When you play one, discard it and take the effect. The only two that are a bit different are the Pioneer and the Watchman. When you play the Pioneer, it means you will now become the first player. Place the card face up to the side of your player board. When the night phase has ended, Collect the Pioneer token and place the card into the discard pile. When playing the Watchman, he protects you from attack. Place him face up next to your player board. He stays there as a reminder that you are protected from attack until your next turn. Upon your next turn, he is removed to the discard pile. Constructing a building is similar to tools only they remain with the player till the end of the game. You will see the costs of the building here and any additional effects the building takes or victory points awarded at the end of the game. There are seven different buildings in the game. You may only build one of each type of building within your settlement. Building ships is the main goal of shipwrights. Here on the ship you will see the costs that are involved to complete a ship. The number of victory points for completing the ship. This tab will tell you what type of ship it is, be it militant or non-militant ships. Here will show what effects completing this ship will have for you. The green symbols will show either an increase or a decrease in the mill capacity. The black symbol will show either an increase or a decrease in the amount of workers that you receive in the night phase. 
and the gold will increase the amount of gold you receive by one during the night phase. At the bottom of the card, you will also see the craftsmen that are required for completing the ship. When a ship is in your hand and you decide that you want to try and build it, you first place it into one of your two workshops. Then, once you have all of the items needed to complete, you turn in the appropriate items, then move your ship from the workshop to along the top of your player board like this. Unlike the buildings, you may construct multiple of the same kinds of ship. When a player is first to complete their fourth ship, this triggers the end of the game. We'll talk more about that in just a few moments. So these are all of the actions that you can take during the day phase. Once all players have completed their turns during the day phase, it's now time for the night phase. When the evening phase begins, all players will have three things happen. First, all players will collect gold. The amount of gold you collect is based on how many workers you have. One gold per worker, plus one for each ship completed that indicates you receive an additional gold. Once done with your gold, you can now collect additional workers. You receive one worker plus one additional worker per symbol indicated on a completed ship. Keep in mind that if you have this symbol, it is one less. However, if the total is zero, you still always collect one worker. Finally, you will need to check your mill inventory to make sure that you have not exceeded the allowance. The standard limit is eight items, but if you have completed ships with the plus or minus mill symbol, that needs to be taken into consideration. If you have exceeded your mill limit, you must discard the number of goods needed to get to the mill limit. Which goods are up to you? If the Pioneer has been played, move the Pioneer token to that player. If not, the player with the Pioneer token passes it to the player to the left. This is now the first player, and the process begins again. When a player completes their fourth ship, it triggers the end of the game. The current day that is being played is completed. When the last player of that round completes their turn, complete the evening phase, and now it's time to count the score. Though the fourth ship triggers the end of the game, it does not mean that players are only limited to four ships. First, players will need to total their military power. Look at this red section of their completed ships and add up the numbers. The player who has the highest total has the strongest military. They collect one of the VP markers it's worth three victory points. Now all players total their victory points on completed ships, completed buildings, and if applicable, the VP marker. The player who has the highest total is the winner of the game. And if there is a tie, the player with the most gold is the winner. And so that's Shipwrights of the North Sea. Thanks for joining us today. We sure hope you enjoyed our explanation on Shipwrights of the North Sea. And if you did, if you can give us a like and subscribe, we greatly do appreciate that. If you got any questions on how to play, please feel free to drop them down in the comments below, and I'll be sure to answer those as quick as I can. Well, now we know the basics, so let's play.